hey all, this is part two, and we're going to loop over an array again. So same case as we had for the while loop, but we're just going to do it with a for loop. So with that in mind, we'll move a little quicker through this and the next example than we did for the while loop, just because it's almost the exact same thing. Uh, instead of the numbers being created outside of it, we put our initial indexing variable here. Our condition goes between the, uh, after the second, or sorry, after the first, uh, come on now, semicolon, and before the second one. And then this is what's going to happen after each uh, iteration of the loop. And we just put this in here to remind ourselves of what's going on so we can have a clear vision of the output. Should be very familiar given the while loop. So now we've got a series of restaurants and we want to log each restaurant to the console. Now eventually what happens in here is going to become more robust, but at this point we're just practicing the for loops. So if all you're able to do is just get the for loop down and see it log each value to the console, then we're still in good shape. Taco shell, lobster tail, vegetable garden. Excellent. So with that in mind, let's talk about the coding challenge. We're going to complete a function that takes one parameter, an array of elements, and it logs all of its elements one at a time to the console. Your function should use a for loop to log each element from the beginning to the end of the array, then return nothing. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, loop an array again. Let's log, get our test cases and our stub. So create a loop which iterates over the input array. Variable, I like to say i, um, but that's because I'm, in certain respects, very unoriginal and lack creativity, because that's what I've seen used before, so that's what I'm gonna use. So i is equal to zero, i needs to be less than the length of the array. And we went over in the last lesson on while loops why this works, but you figure that previously we talked about how the last value in an array is going to be at index array.length minus one. And that's universally the case. So if i stays less than array.length, the last value of i is going to be array.length minus one, giving us the last index in the array. At this point, we're just gonna console.log, quite simply, the array at index i. Run this code to make sure it works in at least one case. Well, at least two cases in this, so it does. Let's take it back to the input window paste it. Well done. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.